Welcome today at the Green Village. We're here with two tokens at a Synergy Hackathon. And in the audience is uh, our host for the site, Green Village, Yoop. Uh, we'll introduce Green Village and himself. And I'm here with a, a partner, a vendor with, uh, with Ralph from uh, Bausch Datacom and also Ritech. Uh, Ralph is uh, in from Germany. I'm here uh, with two tokens living in Amsterdam and my day trip here is at the Delft Technical University. And uh, we're here at a hackathon where we're discussing both the hardware, the infrastructure requirements around the energy transition. And I wanted to uh, introduce you to my sidekicks here, one and two, and please introduce yourselves, you. Yeah, of course. Thank you for, uh, for having me. So my name is uh, Joop van der Weyden. I work as a project manager at the Green Village. Um, should I introduce the Green Village a little sure, bit sure. as well? Yeah. Yep. Um, so um, uh, the Green Village is a field lab for sustainable innovation. Um, the the core of it, we're at the center of the campus of the TU Delft, and we have a bit of a special location here. We have eight houses and twelve residents, uh, and uh, exceptions from existing rules and regulations. So you can do things on our terrain that you're not allowed to do outside of the gates. Of so you have real people living here twenty four seven. Yeah, our guinea pigs. Right. Yeah, <laughs> we are we ourselves are guinea pigs as well. Our office is here. Um, right. the, all the buildings, even the offices, are full of different types of experiments. And when you enter our gates, um, you accept that you become part of experiments as well. So you are guinea pigs today as well. That's the waiver I signed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you you <laughs> signed it by entering the terrain. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And Ralph, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Ralph, Ralph Tegner. I'm the CEO of Ritter Technology. Uh, we are basically a company in IT technology, and uh, we are providing uh, some standard IT management uh, solution, uh, business systems, uh, Microsoft, and uh, we have also a small uh, data center in Oberhausen. And one part of the software development is uh, our department. We we called it IDP, Industrial Data Processing. Uh, in in this uh, uh, department, we are developing software, uh, secure software, uh, are especially also for energy market, but uh, for other um, business solution which need to to collect information, data, transport it to centralized systems, and make the visualization for, for all the things. So primarily focused on industrial telemetry yeah. and energy is one of the only thing, not the only thing you solve problems for. Yes. And so you have customers uh, long standing in Germany. The Rittick group has been uh, going for how many years? Uh, I started selling computer in 1985 and founded the first company. It was called uh, uh, Tegner technology or, and then we stepped up uh, through different levels, uh, uh, partly logistics solutions that was Bauma technology and now we, we have uh, Ritter technology. The Ritter technology started in uh, 2013. Great, great. So just for, I guess, my own bias uh, and announcement to the audience, Ralph and I are working together on a Eurostars grant um, that we successfully achieved. So I'm representing a CEO for Sunified. We have a, a joint project with uh, three other companies. So Ralph uh, and our company uh, really working together to create this uh, new uh, telemetry and edge gateway for uh, the, the, the emerging needs of the smart grid. Uh, we've had a prior footprint here last year. We did the ENK project mm -hmm. uh, at the Green Village. Two Tokens yep. was part of that. And uh, we learned quite a bit of what not to do, how to do the next thing. Um, and we've had some support from local government uh, sponsoring some of our activity, but also just the industry engagement that Two Tokens has done around this sort of site. And uh, maybe you can talk about the, the next project too. Yeah, of course. But before we get into the next one, maybe you want to share a bit what the learnings were of your sure, last one. Sure. What was the project about? Yeah, the project was um, uh, our Unity Gateway. We uh, had the Unity chip on a dev board uh, hooked into uh, a couple of the segments of solar panel strings. We were able to get the telemetry, um, billing grade telemetry from the solar panel strings. Most of the industry uh, does string monitoring, but it, 
uh, for home and residential and commercial industrial, but it's not billing grade. Uh, we're trying to provide ways to monitor uh, solar panels and get um, very um, fine-grained objective truth. What is happening with your solar panel as an asset? How can you use that information to then make decisions around maintenance, just even knowing when to clean the panels? Um, is a panel failing or, or is there a challenge there? And then eventually um, predicting its dispatch. So uh, the Green Village has its own wireless telemetry system here for monitoring performance. So we can see what is the real radiation versus what is forecasted and what, what actually happens. So we learned quite a bit about getting our test harness in working in the Green Village. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this working now as part of our live demo feed. And uh, we tokenized the asset uh, last year. Yep. And for two tokens, we're, we're going to jointly work together with another industry group to tokenize the kilowatt hour. So yep. that, that's uh, part of the ingredient is this Unity chip that provides that crypto anchor, the, the root of trust that the data is trusted data going into these, uh, these measurements. Yeah. So would you have... Uh... Would you have been able to get this far without having a test like uh, like this at the Green Village? Or so the only way to do that would be to use myself, my own uh -huh. home as a guinea pig. Yeah, exactly. um, you know, there's a bias in that. Again, it's also very useful to bring industrial customers, our customers, mm -hmm. the supply chain that we interface to, to a site like TU Delft. TU Delft has their own uh, special laboratory for solar panel development that is world renowned. So to be able to bring uh, the emerging, I guess, new material science and, and this technology to uh, industrialize these new opportunities around solar panel development and to bring a way to monetize this in the industry, um, having the adjoining site at the campus of TU Delft, this is very unique. Mm -hmm. um, to then bring a customer out in the middle of Australia to a working uh, solar park, that might be fine. Yeah. If it's installed maybe near a, a winery or a brewery, that might even be fun. But once you've seen one solar park and it all works, it's uh, pretty um, agricultural in a way. Uh -huh. uh, and we have a much um, more uh, nuanced set of uh, discussions here about what is the industry trying to do why are we doing it here? What is the opportunity in the next stage? Because the industry has to invest in multiple levels and multiple horizons. Mm -hmm. That is not just a one year investment plan. It's it's two years, five years, 10 years. And so we have those intelligent discussions here. Yeah. And it's very hard to do if you're just at a, at a customer site and you say this, this works in this kind of sandbox. Uh -huh. The business case is good, but the whole industry roadmap is quite complex. Yeah. And that's, that's uh, you know, we have stories about that from Sunified and Ralph has stories, you know, in, in Germany, which is highly regulated around uh, GPDR data, customer data is uh, needs to be pristine uh, and well, well regarded and uh, firewalled away. So yeah. we, we have those uh, uh, concerns when it comes to new data, new data collection devices. Uh, Germany is, uh, is a special area for this kind of problem. Uh, the German are <laughs> really, really aware and they want to, to, to hold their privacy and their data in, in their own area. Um, and I think if, if you have a solution that can work in Germany, then you have n no uh, mm -hmm. uh, problem in other countries. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a high hurdle, but once you get that hurdle and that acknowledgement, then it's kind of a, a stamp of, uh, of approval. Yeah. The same thing with uh, two tokens is found. Uh, Baffin is the regulator on the financial authority dealing with what is a token, yeah. what is a tokenized asset versus what is a tokenized offtake, what is the rules to promote this asset as a security offering, or what is the rules to uh, allow consumer participation with this. So two tokens is really overlapping this uh, discourse on uh, regulatory boundaries, these new industry business models. What is the protection for Joe consumer mm -hmm. or Jane? And uh, what is the industry engagement model going forward? I think we just uh, chased out uh, a podcast with three lawyers in the room uh, discussing this. Nah. And it's, it's non-trivial as well. So how many different vendors do you have here and, and work projects and running experiments are, are rolling? Oof, that's a difficult question always because it's, uh, it's highly dynamic. We are um, a constant um, uh, construction site because there's uh, all different types of uh, installations being removed, installed. Yeah. Um, 
we we have about let's say uh, 70 active experiments on the train and some are very small some are a little bit bigger some are very visible yep. others are uh, uh very uh invisible like uh invisible like the the hydrogen grid that we have in in the ground right you don't see uh infrastructure right yeah um the one that I specifically uh, focus on is called digital energy. So it highly overlaps with uh, uh, with what you guys do, uh, which is uh, um, also a subsidy project by the European Fund for Regional Development. Mm. And there we focus on getting this terrain also ready to be able to experiment more with digital side of the energy transition. So we've been talking a lot about the flexibility that might be offered by charging poles or home batteries or uh, heat pumps. Yeah. Um, but doing that actual control um, is not so straightforward as people talk about. So it's uh, it, there's not just one communication protocol. Uh, some vendors are more open than others. Um, maybe you want to secure it in a different way. The assets maybe need identity, yes. uh, which they don't have yet. So um, we want to make sure that if uh, companies or scientists want to experiment on our terrain, then we have the assets to play around with. Yeah, so I coined the phrase a living lab that uh -huh. might be useful, but this is not just a living lab in a house that mm -hmm. could be very contrived. This is a living precinct in a way. Yeah. So it's a precinct with an industry footprint, uh, a campus uh, roadmap. Uh, it's a learning type environment as well. So I've yeah. seen students in here learning their different courses Definitely. and they're, yeah. and you know, if I'm hiring new technicians from uh, from Sunified or or new researchers, we want to be able to uh, hire students that have practical uh, in-field uh, experiments mm -hmm. ra rather than a lab, a purified lab experience. So, you know, yeah. dealing with uh, the the educational uh, overlay is is really important. Um, the we, sorry, oh, sorry, yeah. So we always say we have the, the hop, step, jump model. So okay. uh, the, the the first. So so if you have a uh, a product or a, um, a concept that works in theory, you've tested it maybe in a lab in a very isolated environment, and you make the first hop to the green village, uh, which is still uh, still a pretty uh, controlled environment, yeah. but it's, it does introduce the, um, the more raw uh, real life world where uh, residents might press buttons on your device that they're not supposed to push or um, uh, installers uh, do something that someone could even unplug it <laughs> exactly so <laughs> they do things that are unexpected right so yeah. uh, it's the, the the messy real world that you kind of get uh, introduced to um so if if that works you get the kinks out of the cable in that uh, first introduction um then you make the step to a pilot location a little bit bigger maybe uh, let's say 50 homes or 100 homes and then the jump to the market to the market yeah, yeah. okay yeah Ralph, you mentioned a, a lighthouse customer in Germany where you had the experience with your gateways and what you're doing. Yeah. How, what was that experience? And, um, and now you're going to be, we're going to be bringing uh, Ritech uh, gear here this year. So um, this, is, this is your first overlap. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, our idea in the IDP department was to, to bring our server systems in a small device because we wanted to, to, to have some intelligence uh, on the edge. And uh, in the past, we, we used some small PCs or, uh, or other devices like Raspberry Pi or so on. But this kind of devices are not uh, industrial grade because they have some problems, they have or hardware weaknesses and uh, we are, are needed uh, in industrial hardware and uh, we talked to our sister company Bausch Datacom and they uh, create a solution for uh, industrial in environments for uh, decades. And uh, so we, we, we took this hardware and uh, created some operating system on it because uh, the requirements from the customer or are uh, more and more focused on uh, security. 
it is also uh, um, from from the legal side or uh, from the European Union there are a, a lot of uh, new uh, requirements or uh, it's uh, the last was or uh, I think December or um, in, in 2022 it was NIST 2 uh, there are a lot of requirements for security in, in such devices and so we created an operating system which uh, uh, is controlled every week uh, against weaknesses from CVEs and that's our IT uh, uh, security side and uh, we use this kind of devices for for critical infrastructure critical infrastructure uh, grows uh, from from the German uh, uh, government uh, in in different regions or uh, first only uh, for energy producer and distribution and now also for food companies if you have a big food company it's also critical because if you have no food for 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 the people then you have a problem yes. and so uh, every every big company uh, has to to follow the requirements of security and uh, that's uh, uh, really good for us because we are uh, uh, IT security company and uh, we can take our experience from the past from the data center and other, uh, every other things together in in this kind of devices and uh, um, because we we have the certification for it, it's it's 27k for the complete company. Uh, we are able to to uh, deliver this solution to the critical infrastructure. And one of our customer is a fire department uh, of of the city of Duisburg. It's very close to, to the Netherlands, uh, the city of Duisburg, and uh, they have a special need. They uh, want to 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 uh, have uh, their fire trucks uh, um, in a, in a fast way uh, on the road, and to do this, they must have a special solution uh, for for air pressure in in the brakes of, of 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 the fire trucks. And our solution is to to control the the needed uh, technology and machines. And if there is a problem, we send this information directly to, to, to maintenance companies and they can solve the problems in, 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 in several hours. And uh, so uh, it's uh, a controlled environment for, for the fire department. So this is critical infrastructure. So when the fire trucks needs the roll siren, the, all the brakes are there. They're up to the, the air brake reserve capacity is there yeah. and they can go out of the garage at full speed. Yeah. And basically that system system is, is kept uh, at optimum, let's call it maintenance, and it's monitored with your critical monitoring services. Yeah. So if you take that kind of overlay and learning with your industry uh, telemetry, and you apply that to the energy grid and what is happening here, um, you know, we've had a number of workshops at the, at the hackathon, what is the critical uh, problems for one of uh, four different uh, industry categories. Some of the industry problems are around the, the metro uh, DSO, um, let's call it grid infrastructure. What is the changes that we see coming in that infrastructure? What is the new requirements? Because they want more flexibility. What is the safety requirements? You have an experience in Germany. We, we're trying to find projects here to uh, step into and assist. So there's a vendor tension because vendors say they have the total solution. Of course, the, the DSO as a customer and then the ultimate customer being a, a Joe customer with a home or a, a business, they're still waiting for this uh, magic uh, called the smart grid to actually evolve and work. So, and in the past, you you are, um, uh, could buy a dedicated solution, and uh, this solution uh, were very stable and uh, specially are uh, um, designed for getting information, uh, standardized uh, information directly from from a special area to a special destination. Uh, it is uh, uh, not flexible enough. Uh, now you have. Uh, a lot of new application and if you create infrastructure for collecting data maybe then you 
uh, you have no the, not the complete knowledge about the requirement for the next years. And that's the need why uh, we have to, to change uh, the, the data transport uh, infrastructure. So the grid used to be centrally dispatched and distributed out to the uh, edge. Yeah. And now the grid is becoming more bi-directional. And in fact, the loads that are happening at the edge are, are, are much more than uh, what the original capacity was for. So these bi-directional grids are being uh, exercised and the infrastructure is not ready for it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. You have no chance to, to, to add more functions uh, in, in existing infrastructure of, of the gateways because they are uh, specially designed for one functionality and yeah. not for, for flexible functionality for the future. So your solution for doing this is the joint development of the Q7 uh, with Bausch Datacom, and that's a, a flexible uh, RTU, a rack terminal unit. This used to be a very simple thing in the old in, in, uh, internet days called a rack modem. <laughs> Effectively, yeah. it was a, a way to take a multiple set of signals and mux them together, just like the switchboard here with our voices but this is a mux for industrial uh, signals. But now this is really an intelligent appliance. It's a secure embedded Linux machine yeah. with its own identity, its own software lifecycle. And that is the endpoint to your uh, data service uh, in, in uh, Germany. That's right. And uh, we have our, uh, a full Linux stack inside and we have our uh, functionality of, of container software and we can take uh, software from other uh, vendors inside and also we have a possibility to to close this container and then protect them uh, against uh, uh, tampering maybe and uh, that's a big difference to to the old gateway which has an operating system stable system uh, and and collecting all the data but now we have uh, also the way back to to or uh, give some more uh, information to uh, uh, to the operating area right okay and you would have seen in the green village more uh, intelligence happening around inverters i've seen your test harness that's mm -hmm. here at the green village but you would have seen other uh, vendors come in with other, other types of thinking around uh, the distributed grid and digital energy. So what, what's been the example outside of uh, us here? Yeah, so here it's, uh, it's a bit uh, different, right? Because the, the solution that you're saying, so an RTU, it's something uh, people, most people don't have a server rack in their home. So, Correct. Uh, yeah. Putting an RTU there, a unit there, it's, it's not going to, to work in the yeah, same but the way. Home, or it might be. It, it, it is not a server rack. It's a, it's a very small device <laughs> or okay. it's uh, designed for uh, normally or uh, yeah, uh, electro uh, under uh, um, sorry, uh, and uh, it's a very small device, and uh, yeah. it's, so it's a it big can go into the fuse box. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, so then it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I hope that something like this, uh, which is uh, is owned by a, let's say, uh, not by your energy uh, supplier, but by some. A more neutral uh, services organization yeah, third party yeah. yeah exactly so there's actually but, a new category yeah. for a distributed energy provider mm. um and they they are going to be a billing provider that orchestrates between yeah. the, these different uh let's call it re regions of the grid yeah um wh what we've had to do uh with this uh dynamic in the industry uh, carriers like KPN, Voda in Australia, they're called Telstra. They want to be the magic box that is the home gateway that has an energy application it running it. Yeah. Uh, then maybe the smart meter company, they have a meter at your home. Uh, they want to run gateway services and value add their, their infrastructure as well. Yeah. And um, we have we see this uh, will happen in the internet. You know, we we have a number of people challenging to who's going to own the customer, yep. uh, and uh, who has that billing relationship with the customer. Because if you have that billing hook, then you can say, okay, I've got a subscription, yep. I have some kind of model that I have a recurring revenue model, yep. and therefore I can there I can uh, run a different uh, business domain. Um, this means disintermediation from some of the traditional players. Some players are changing their stripes or at least changing their, uh, their, their code to say, we're, we're more friendly, we're going to do this. Yeah. Uh, and we see a lot of tension in the industry. Yeah. Um, Sunified has, has got customers that want to 
produce uh, solar panels and storage, mm -hmm. and we cannot find a solution that allows us to elegantly find one box yeah. that would be in the customer premises to, to do this. So we've had to say, okay, for the first few customers, maybe the first few hundred, we're going to have a dedicated gateway. It's smart meter inside. So it's uh, like a smart meter. It is a, a media gateway that's ethernet connected. So it can be part of the home network, but it also is connected to solar panels and batteries. Yeah. So it becomes the media mediator for this new new opportunity. Yeah. But th this is the I guess the frustration because you're having to overcapitalize the customer's experience. They have yet another box connected on their network. And yeah. th this is the challenge that we see through the whole industry. Um, uh, identity becomes part of that. How do you um, run the software stack through its life cycle? You know, when the customer plugs it in, you don't want them to have the password being lowercase password. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, th this is the challenge that you know most customers just want plug and play, QR code, username, click, done. Right? Maybe yeah. that's that's it. But uh, this uh, discipline and transition is, is is going to be a little bit more difficult than that. Yes, yeah, so if you want to do it inclusively, then you would make all the you replace the existing smart meters with a smart meter that has some sort of uh, capability of running a server, having a platform to yeah. connect different services to, right? And that's the vision of the NetBehair Net project. NetBehair project is mm -hmm. our, our uh, project of of, of uh, different uh, DSOs. I think our Stedin, Aliander, yeah. um, and Fluvius is in, and maybe an Nexus a little, little bit later. And they have a vision to 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 make a, a really smart measuring system, including a next gen gateway. And uh, we are working uh, uh, in in this project. And I think that that's the solution for 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 every household uh, to to have a gateway in this uh, project it's uh, owned by dso mm -hmm. but uh, it's also possible to to do it with a, a vodafone or some other, uh, other companies but it is uh, really needed to 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 find new uh, um, yeah projects uh, out, out, okay uh, yep okay uh, I can, yeah, can I continue? Yeah, so, please. So, because I'm very curious. I really like this this idea, but at the same time, I also think like the implementation of smart meters took years. Um, if that is not going to be too long, and if the market will not just uh, um, over overtake this, yeah, this or, or grind right? away at because something else. Let's say uh, if you do smart home control, this is that's the we focus on homes here, right? At the Green yeah. Village, if you talk about smart smart devices and home. Uh, management, then uh, Google and uh, Apple uh, and Amazon are already there. Correct. Uh, for the DIY community, there's Home Assistant, but it's uh, um, so with domotics and smart lighting, now P1 uh, port uh, meter readings and solar inverters are already coupled. Yeah, but it's loosely coupled, yeah. and and the uh, energy orchestration mm -hmm. needs to be a little bit more tightly coupled. But we can't yeah. have the energy company going behind the meter yeah. and turning off your heater or turning on your heater unless you give them permission. Yeah. So um, also, you know, what do they see besides your heater on the network if they could query it? So there's a real uh, sort of domain security that Ralph has. Yeah. Um, there's this kind of user experience uh, field you know, reliability and real experience that the Green Village can help us ma map out. Mm -hmm. And for us, we're trying to champion the customer that they have their own identity, their own their own preferences that they can choose. So uh, in, our, in our way, the customer wins if they have customer choice. Yeah. If you're forced into something, uh, we don't think that that is uh, going to end up necessarily being uh, uh, an elegant uh, solution. Um, we do know that uh, there'll be experiences, good and bad, as the industry goes through some of these growing pains. Um, I think it's very challenging and very compelling that we have this workplace environment at the Green Village. I've been involved with other university uh, transition uh, precincts in Canada and in California. Mm -hmm. I think it's very unique, especially in the European context, what TU Delft has done and what Green Village is, is doing. Um, we'd like to continue to, to make this uh, a learning um, map for that. Yep, but we also want to do things. You know, that's yeah. that's 
talking about it like today on a podcast is is okay but yeah. we're, we're actually doing it and that, that's the real difference uh, that we see with a practical outcome around a hackathon yeah. and where you guys are you know that hop skip jump uh -huh. uh, kind of boost let's let's get into the market right so uh, and i really I'm, think it's a com I'm compelling story to, we've had one project uh, yeah, already one. so let's see yeah. if uh if the well, we're bringing EMK we're bringing more well. vendors to the mix right so yeah. it's uh that that's what's happening great Right. Thank you, gentlemen. Ralph. Thank nope. you, Leon. Great. Fantastic. That was it for today's podcast. Thank you for listening in and please subscribe so you don't miss out on our upcoming episodes. If you want to get in touch with us, you can find our contact details at www.twotokens.org.